Now let's talk about the letter L. For some reason, this has always been one of my favorite letters in virtually any, any uh, font. I like it. I like it in chancery cursive as well. This one starts with a, a counterclockwise curve at the top, a fairly smooth or straight sh uh, stem, and then a nice long horizontal at the beginning, at, at the bottom. That's all there is to it. Curve, curve, curve. How can you not like that letter? <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. Um, let's talk about the lowercase l. Again, pretty simple, just as the stem of the B and the D and the H and the K, the flag at the top goes off to the right. And you can either push that flag or pull it. The stem is fairly straight and then finishes with a nice little curve at the bottom. That's all there is to it. Now, this is, of course, an ascender that's above the X height line, and this is ends at the baseline. If you have to do it the other way, you would pull that stem, pull that flag, I should say, and of course pull the stem parallel with your italics guy line and then kick out that foot. This is a good time for me to mention because the letter L is so simple. Do you notice many times on many of these letters when I'm doing that, that stroke, this stroke that's going up this way, I actually cause the pen, in this case the pencil, but I'm calling it a pen, to in a sense stand up on its hind legs. There's only one pencil on the paper and you actually learn to do that same thing with the pen. Okay, Watch out for that. I'm not going to spell it out on every letter, but that applies to many letters. Let's now go to the... Oh, oh before I do that, let me talk about the double L. There are many times in, English, in the English language where there are two L's next to each other and that presents an unusual opportunity and the way I resolve it, and, and many calligraphers resolve it, is by making the second L just a little bit shorter than the first, so it can actually tuck in a little bit to the first L, connect to it at the bottom, and then have the same kick out curve at the, bo at the bottom of that. Does that make sense? So a double L is like that. The one alternative I'll mention real quickly is you could make the first L even taller than normal so that this doesn't begin to look like a cap, like a lowercase c. Does that make sense? So you make the first L even a little bit higher than the ascender line and then the second L will still be tall enough so that it won't be confused with a letter C. So that's a fun little trick you can learn with a double L. Now what if the L is the last letter in a line of type? You can probably predict this. You take that, that foot and simply do a little S-curve or there's an S-curve, there's a single curve, or even make, it, even make it go up like this depending on the context. You have a lot of fun with those final letters. You can do a lot of things with them. Let me progress then to the felt tip pen. Get a little bit smaller and a little bit more challenging. You understand the larger you do calligraphy, really the easier it is. It's the small stuff that's more difficult. So the letter L a curve, I'm pushing this curve and pulling the stem and pulling the base. If your pen and paper combination do not allow you to push that initial curve, then of course you would pull it this way. There's one curve and then here's the next line. Does that make sense? Technically, the purists would say always do it this way but actually sometimes they and we cheat and if you can get away with pushing it uphill it's perfectly acceptable. That's the capital L. Now the lowercase L. Let me find some guidelines down here and move my board slightly. There you go. Lowercase L. I'm going to push this first flag then the down line and a little out kick. What if I've got a double L? I'm going to make the first L taller. The stem parallel to the italics slant, kick out, and then the second L, normal height, stem, and this kick out either to the next letter or, of course, to the final letter in a line of type. Now let's move to the dip pen. This is, again, the felt tip marker is great for practice, and sometimes if you're doing something perhaps like wedding invitations, you can get away with a felt tip pen if you're doing hundreds and hundreds of, of, of versions, lines of type. 
but uh, most of the time, if you want to do something really beautiful, you're going to want to go to a dip pen because you get the, the fineness of this stroke is much finer than you get with a, with a felt tip marker. Okay, so this is, I always have a piece of scrap paper nearby to make sure that my pen is behaving. There we go. Capital L. I'm going to draw the top curve properly by pulling the stem, coming down, little kick there, and then the nice horizontal. Simple enough. How about lowercase l? Let me draw this the right way again. Pulling that flag at the top, making the stem parallel to my italics line, little Oh, I'm doing a capital L again, aren't I? Forget that. Let's make that a capital L. Okay, now lowercase L. <laughs> I got carried away with making that. There we go. There's the flag. Here's the stem. And this time I go this way, ready either to connect to the next letter or, as you've already seen, if there's a double L, draw the next L, and that one connects, connects to the next letter. What the L? I, I'm, that was good. <laughs> You're doing great. Let's keep going. <laughs>